Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. Thank you for turning in. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button, share with a friend, and also please leave a comment because I do answer the questions. Now, if you noticed, just a side note, because you are technically not my patient, I cannot give you exact advice. So if you understand how I'm answering the questions, I always say I always recommend or this is what I suggest. You know, I'm doing a part series on the metabolism of estrogen. I don't know how many parts I'm going to have at this point, but right now it's part three. Thank you for watching. Okay, let's continue the series on the metabolism of estrogen. And I know it's very, very complicated and I try to keep it basic, not too detail oriented Yes, I do know this material, I do teach it. So the, the finite detail stuff that, please, I know I left it out. So don't be commenting saying, hey, you forgot this stuff. You got, I know I did. Okay, but remember, I need to speak to a general audience, but still kind of keep it specific. So when it comes to part, you know, part three of the metabolism of estrogen, the main thing that I'm focusing on is supporting the two hydroxyl, hydroxyl pathway. And in addition to supporting the CYP-A1A liver enzyme. So when it comes to the breakdown, now this is the good estrogen, okay? You like this estrogen, this is the healthy estrogen. So when it comes to different phases, you have phase one and phase two. So with phase one, it's just a simple breakdown. The first domino that, can, that uh, hydroxylates estrione into two hydroxyl estrione. And that's with the liver enzyme, the C, uh, C, CYPA1A. And that's responsible for the hydroxylation. I always say that's like the first domino effect when you're trying to break down, when you're breaking down the estrogen for its metabolites. Now this is important to understand because this is phase one with the liver pathway. And remember the liver has a lot of functions. It turns inactive vitamins active. It helps process, it helps to uh, produce bile to be utilized in the gallbladder. So there's a lot of things that can affect this phase one if the liver is not being taken care of. And a couple things, foods, environment. Foods in particular, now remember, I always say start off with diet. Stay away from wheat, gluten, dairy, soy, sugar, and peanuts. That alone will cause the liver to be backed up. So how do you support this liver? With foods, cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables. What are these? The broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, uh, cauliflower. This is loaded in an ingredient called DIM, diendomethane, diendomethane. Now, you can eat a lot of vegetables if you choose to. However, due to all the contaminants, the pesticides, all the GMO, you're not gonna get a sufficient amount of DIM in your system to help, to help clear out the liver pathway. So this is why I always recommend taking the supplement DIM, because the function of this, it upregulates the CYP and uh, A1A liver enzyme. This helps the liver. Things that may affect the liver pathway from an outside source is insecticides, pesticides, contaminated water, contaminants, pollution, because we take in everything from the outside in, and if that is being bogged down, sure, it's gonna affect this first domino effect of hydroxylation. Now, the second phase, phase two, conversion. This is when it converts from the 2-hydroxylesterone to the final metabolite that we need and utilize, like to, is to methoxyesterone. That's a final metabolite of estrogen to be utilized. Conversion. Now we do have a gene, COMT gene, catechol o methyltransferase, that's involved in the conversion of 2-hydroxylesterone to 2-methoxyesterone. Uh, now in here, yeah, there could become uh, some of the factors involved which is hindering the process of that conversion. This is where it comes more to genetics. Now genetics play a big part on how the whole body works in general. And you could always get blood labs. Again, I do a lot of blood work as well to find out what's going on below the surface. Now with genetics, when how it plays a part in phase two, it may affect the metabolism, the metabolism of estrogen, especially with the conversion. So we have this called a SNP. Now there's many SNPs, okay? A SNP, I say, it's like, you, it's like a card. You have 52 cards. A SNP just may be one card, okay, that may affect the function of how the body's working. And I don't want to go down too deep into that. 
But the main thing that, we, that we're looking at is the MTHFR gene. Now, MTHFR, methyl, methylene hyd, uh, tetrahydrofolate reductase, what this does in general, it's an enzyme that helps break down homocysteine. What it does, it breaks down, it makes the inactive vitamin B vitamins active. Now, if you test positive for this, you're, not ha you're having the inability to break down the inactive form of Bs to the active form of a B. Okay, it goes from inactive to active. So it cannot convert an active B to active B, which helps in the phase two liver detox. So when it, if, we, if I test you, or if you have a test that you, have, you test positive for this MTHFR gene, it's not the end of the world. It's, I mean, you're not gonna die from it. It's just that we have to watch the diet a little bit more. Again, we gotta tune it in, which is actually beneficial in the end because overall, what's gonna improve your, your overall health is cleaning up your diet. If you're always following me on, if you're following me on my videos, what do I always end up with? Diet first, diet first, diet first, and then afterwards, of course, exercise and supplementation. So if you, if you test positive for the MTGFR gene, okay, and what I always recommend is including methyl B vitamins. Methyl B vitamins are already broken down. Methylfolate, methylcobalamin, and instead of B6 to P5P, that's the already broken down version of vitamin B6, which is good for the system. Now you're gonna ask yourself, what's the big deal? What's the big deal with homocysteine? If you're not breaking down homocysteine and homocysteine elevates in the system, that's a huge indicator for heart disease, cardiovascular risk. So this is why this is important. So now we have another gene that can be involved with the conversion of of um, the 2-hydroxyl hydroxylesterone to, to uh, methoxyesterone, and that's the catechol methyltransferase. Now, what if you test positive for that? Okay, it's not the end of the world. It's involved in the methylation of estrogen, the final pathway. So what you have is, is involved in the conversion, the final conversion, so we, could be, we like this. We want to use this. So what happens if you have reduced COMPT activity, what's going, you're not going to convert to the end product. So what's going to happen? You're ever going to increase estrogen accumulation. You're not going to be able to utilize the estrogen that's being produced. So you're going to have a decreased estrogen conversion. So this is where you get a blood work done and you're maybe producing a lot of estrogen, but it's not being utilized into the cell. So what happens at phase two, the estrogen metabolism is sluggish. Now there's ways to support the methylation because remember phase two is about methylation. Methyl B vitamins. I always recommend if you don't, if you know or you don't know if you're tested positive for MTHFR, just do the methylated vitamins anyways, just as a precautionary matter. SAMe, colon, I'm sorry, choline, mag colon. <laughs> magnesium. Start off with 200 milligrams of magnesium. There's 10 different types of magnesium. I always recommend let's do magnesium glycinate. Exercise. Exercise is phenomenal for the system as a whole, whether if you're 13 or 90, when you exercise, you're releasing endorphins, you're increasing blood flow in the area. You're actually increasing the way the organs are being utilized, especially the colon. Fiber. Fiber is very important, especially for females, because your estrogen base, and in the next video, I'll show how the estrogen metabol metabolism, how it, the gut is involved in that. This is why a lot of females who have poor digestion, it equates to estrogen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you don't like the video, tell me why. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Be good.